When you told me there was no W in your name, that's why I said it in my head, Lawrence. And then, does anyone remember this controversy? Like maybe the gays in here, uh, or maybe Dan America, who has a stage name on Facebook. Uh, like when Facebook tried to like lock it down on stage names, like that was a that was a serious deal for a while. People were leaving Facebook because of it, or they were changing their name. And I was like seeing all these drag queens' birth names. I knew I knew Larry's. I know my roommates. I won't say it. Um, but I saved him in my phone as that just to piss him off. <laughs> uh, but you know, I'm seeing all these names, and I'm like, you saved my phone were your parents that shocked when not only you were you were gay, but you were like that gay? <laughs> See all these names, Joey and Bruce and shit, like. They must have known, like they were just planning in advance, like this child will not only be gay, they will dress as a woman later in life, Lawrence. You know, like they were, just, they were just banking on it. Sorry, I've thought about that so much and I've never tried it as a joke. I just had to bring it up right now because Coco said her actual name on stage. Love it. By the way, give it up for Coco. That's so brave, man. Coco did exactly what I did when I first started stand-up. So this is what you have to look forward to is uh, a lot of like blackout nights where you cried because only like two people laughed, or you fell off the stage because you were blackout drunk, <laughs> or um, so many times. you forgot to uh, ask them to film it. your set because you were blackout drunk. Um, just look forward to being blackout drunk, which is like, you know, that's normal. So, uh, right? Shalita here. I miss intervention. <laughs> I miss intervention so much. And we here. Did I already tell that joke here tonight? I know I told it at Comedy Works. Fine, I'm gonna tell it here that. Anybody here watch Intervention? Oh my God, that show is amazing. I used to get drunk and watch Intervention. Is that weird? No, it's not. Fuck you. Don't tell me otherwise. I just cry and, and like, you know, whiff some fucking electronics duster and then like sing I'm Walking on Sunshine <laughs> at you. I'll do it at you. Um, yeah, I would get drunk and watch Intervention with my old roommate. And, uh, you know, I probably have a drinking problem, but I'm functioning. So why bother, you know? I go against the stream, you know, really is what it is. But uh, I, anytime I got nervous or, or worried about my own drinking problem, I would uh, watch the show and you know, these, these men and women, they're fucking like getting the shakes, smearing their shit on walls, they're fucking made, there's blurred out things on the body, that's never good, screaming at their families. And I'd be like, okay, you know, I'm, uh, I'm in a good place. Please pass me the Listerine. With that, I'm going to bring up uh, the last comic of the night. He was also at Comedy Works tonight, and I'm so happy that he was able to make it over uh, with his beautiful wife, uh, who is also a huge supporter of this mic. Uh, the very, I don't know if any of you were here the night that uh, the, the heckler smashed his martini glass. Uh, that was uh, probably our most epic night here. Uh, if you get a chance, please check out Dan America on YouTube. He recreated the heckler Ooh. as himself because the camera was only pointed at me the whole time. And it's probably one of the funniest things, genuinely, Even I've ever seen bag. someone do. What? Even the knockoff Gucci bag? Oh, yeah. No. And the over-gelled hair. Oh, Dan went all out. So please oh, check Dan America out on YouTube. He is hilarious. And he's a huge supporter of this mic in the local comedy scene. One of the hardest working men I know in show business. James Brown, everybody. Woo! <laughs> Dan America, everybody! Give it up! Hey, Rocks, what's going on? Yes, I uh, just got done with the comedy works. And it's funny that uh, Kat brought up that whole uh, Facebook thing. Yes. On Facebook, I'm Dan America. They haven't asked me to change my name yet. And I know why. Because they're afraid I'm going to accuse them of being terrorists. Uh, all right. Hey, wait, Kat, where are you going? You're not going anywhere, are you? This no. next joke is for you. I was hugging Coke. Okay, okay, okay. But the, this next joke is for you because it's about the Super Bowl. Yeah! Did, did anyone hear about this bullshit where Tom Brady is trying to figure out 
how to give his MVP truck to the man that caught the interception in the end zone, uh, Malcolm Butler. Tom Brady gets 120, he's worth $120 million. Super Bowl MVP. Can't figure out how to just give someone a fucking truck that was given to him. <laughs> but I'm on to him, I know why. He can't give Malcolm Butler the truck because Tom Brady had already promised it to the boy that held on to his deflated balls. <laughs> yes, that's right. He promised them the truck to the boy that helped deflate his balls. And that just leaves me thinking one thing. If deflating Tom Brady's balls and holding on to them is worth the truck, then Patriots fans must give a really good, good head. You missed it, cat. I'm sorry. That's fine. I'm trying to get laid here, Dan. Well, well that's what it was about. I was trying to help you. I just said that Patriots fans must give really good head if it's worth the truck. It is. It is. It is definitely worth it. That's right. It's definitely worth it. All right. Now, uh, I recently heard about this man in Michigan, a uh, 56-year-old man, had to walk 23 miles to work every day, so he went to GoFundMe.com, and now he's getting a car. And that's great. And you know, they got Kickstarter and everything, and just this just got me thinking. People will probably donate to anything, so I wanted to figure out some things that people maybe would not donate to. So I got a couple. Uh, first one is, uh, donate to my cause of, I need a pack of smokes. I've run out. Next one is donate money so I can move to Washington where marijuana is legal so that I can smoke all day and work at a coffee shop. Next one is uh, donate to my charity of I need a meth lab because my last one burnt down and I need a new one so that I can cook meth. Another one, school for strippers. I want to open up a school for strippers because, well, strippers exist, but not everyone really knows how to take their clothes off. Have you ever seen a bad stripper? Yep. You have? Okay, good. So I'm not alone on this one. I saw a bad stripper once, and then I told myself, well, just stop looking in the fucking mirror. Aww. But I'm good at judging strippers, so I'm going to be the dean of admissions at my school for strippers, and the only way that you can pass is by putting on a private show for the dean. <laughs> Another charity that I thought would be a noble cause is that you don't really hear of many vampire slayers, werewolf slayers, or zombie killers. Where are they? So I'm taking donations to be the world's first official zombie, werewolf, vampire slayer. Uh, another fun one that I thought of was, uh, I need an idea. So, donate to my cause of thinking of an idea so that when I think of one, I already have the money. Another one is the Flux Capacitor Charity. Help me travel back into time and I'll thank you then so that way you can remember now. Another one, another really fun charity is Guinness Book of World Records charity, and what we're trying to accomplish here is that we're trying to set the record for most donations. So, do you guys think anyone's going to donate to my cause? Okay, so uh, <coughs> earlier tonight I, uh, I talked a little, about, a little bit about Disney. And this just brings me back to my old Super Bowl uh, commercial ideas. I had two ideas for a Super Bowl commercial, and it was based on the fact that uh, some meats aren't very popular in America, and I think Disney can help us with that. So here are the two commercials. First one I call Thumper Nuggets, because he didn't have anything nice to say at all. <laughs> then there's the other one, which is Christopher Robin's Rabbit Stew made from 100% rabbits and the vegetables in his garden. It tastes so pure, you'll never forget it, even when you're a hundred. So, uh, anyone gonna buy those products? <laughs> All right, want some thumper nuggets or some rabbit stew? Okay, that's cool. Now, I call myself Dan America because my name is Dan and I am from America. And I like to spread a little patriotism wherever I go. And I don't know if any of you have heard about this, but apparently 
foreigners think our food is fucking gross. Well, I got a few things to say to them. Because they think cheese whiz and Velveeta cheese is gross because it's not real cheese. Well, you know what? It's science cheese. And they're fucking jealous. Especially the French. What the hell do the French got but a giant naked prick of a monument? And then those assholes tried to be the authority on monuments, sent us a statue with its clothes on. Like, Americans aren't good enough to have a sta naked statue like the rest of Europe. So they sent us a statue with its clothes on. So we showed them, we took a walk out in Arizona, found a giant hole in the ground, said, Monument. They can't even fit their giant naked prick in our huge fucking asshole don't like our fucking cheese. You know, they eat lamb head and head cheese. You know, you know what head cheese is, right? Brains. Oh. So fuck them. They also say that uh, bread bought from a market is gross. Well, while they're waiting for their loaves to rise, I'm gonna have me a peanut butter and jelly and some Wonder Bread. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Wonder who is responsible for that one. Probably Italy. Well, I got news from Italy. The Leaning Tower of Pisa isn't leaning, it's fucking falling. Fucking assholes can't even build a building right. And they can't even build a building that was built wrong right because it's taking forever to fucking fall. All right, what else did they think was gross? Uh, they think that red vine and Twizzlers are gross. Why? Because it's not shaped like fish. I blame the Swedes on this one. And the Swedes also think that soup-based casseroles are gross, but they eat dumplings marinated in reindeer blood and bone marrow. And I have a theory about this. They're trying to harness the ability of flight so they can get the fuck out of there. And here's one that really pisses me off. And it doesn't just piss me off. Apparently, foreigners think that the following foods are gross. Meatloaf, jerky, biscuits and gravy, and corn dogs. Way to go to piss off the fucking South. But they also think that American bacon is gross. Well, this means fucking war. <laughs> they also think that our cereal is gross. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna send Captain Crunch and Tony the Tiger there, because he's a captain, I don't know of what, and Tony's a tiger, so he'll fuck some shit up. But we're not gonna send Toucan Sam, Sonny the Cocoa Puffs Bird, or Snack Crackle and Pop, because, you know, they eat babies in China. What? <laughs> what won't they eat? Sending Snap Crackle and Snap Crackle and Pop over there, that's just, you know, they're just gonna pop them in there like popcorn chicken or some shit. And you ever notice you never see any Asian midgets? No, you don't, because they're probably trying to fucking eat them. But call our food fucking gross. We're going to nuke your fucking countries, and then because they think Pop Tarts are gross, that's all they're going to get. Because the popcorn, uh, pop tart packaging will enable it to survive a nuclear blast. <laughs> Take that, foreign countries. Call our food gross. Yeah. Well, I hope I just made you feel all a little bit more patriotic about yourselves. Did I do the trick? Did I do the trick? Yeah! Okay, alright! Well, I am Dan America. I hope you enjoyed all that. You can go look at my YouTube, all that stuff, and oh, just one more thing. Uh, the Detroit Lions are going to win the Super Bowl in 300. No! And, yes, they are! In three, oh, God damn it, I forgot how many days now. 300. In 67 days, the Detroit Lions will win the Super Bowl. Thank you very much, Rocks and Albany! Dan America, everybody, keep it going, keep it going. Oh, the way to keep it going, oh my god, awful. None of you love America. Dan talked about China. I work in a Chinese restaurant. And not like not like a creepy one. Like I work in a I work in a really good one actually. Uh, if anyone's heard of Rain on Lark Street, anyone eaten there? It's dope. 
Um, the gays love rain, actually. And uh, somehow it's like magic. They all end up in my section and then leave me huge tips. I, uh, uh, there was a girl that worked there uh, recently. She left to go to Thailand with her wife. She's lesbian. And she told me, she was like, hey, hey, uh, roommate and Brian. Char and Brian. Sorry. Keep that table talk to a minimum. <laughs> We're flirting with each other. Leave us alone. I hope. You are both so cute. I know. I would love to see you in one of those like <laughs> gay geared Pinterest things if I didn't hate Pinterest so much. Because it makes me it. feel like less of a woman. <laughs> Everything makes me feel like less of a woman nowadays. Ah, oh, so sad. Ugh. I was just saying that. That's not even a joke. I don't even have, I have anything to follow up on that. Uh, I'm just, I'm less of a woman. Yeah, you are. <laughs> and you know what's sad is like when I go out, out like when I mean it, which is basically never, uh, but when I do, you know, uh, it's a bi-monthly thing uh, for about three hours, I would say, until I uh, get drunk slash tired enough to just want pizza. <laughs> I wear more makeup than my roommate, and my roommate is a drag queen, like, <laughs> like the whole time. And I do it quickly enough that I don't feel like it's a, a bad time comparison. I'm like, eh, 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 eh. well, fuck Char, she wish she could do it in this amount of time. I look like a real girl. <laughs> um, Love you. And now I fucked up what I was already talking about. God damn it. Um, uh, oh, Chinese restaurant. So, uh, I've, uh, I've bartended and served a lot at a lot of really great places. Uh, if I didn't have, like, my big girl adult job that doesn't pay me enough to live, so I have to still bartend and serve. Basically, I like bartending and serving. It's all of my cocaine and, and booze mine. Uh, yay! Um, I have a problem, guys. Why is nobody hearing my call for help? <laughs> You're supposed to care about me. Um, no, but really, uh, this is the first place I ever worked at where we pull tips. And I dig that. I really dig that, actually, because when I worked at, uh, at busier places, well, we got crazy busy. I mean, we were open on Christmas. Do you have any idea how many fucking Jews were there? Like, <laughs> oh my god! They just wanted all the fucking chicken feet they could have. Oh. And they were like, "Oh, that's so great! You're Christian. What are you doing here?" I'm like, "Paying rent." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mazel tov, I guess. Um, are you done with that? Are you done with those dumplings? Thank you. Um, but yeah, uh, we pull tips, and I dig that. I actually really dig that, because at other restaurants I've worked at, I've helped out like on a really big table, and they get like this massive tip, and they're like, hey, here's five bucks, thank you so much. That was really awesome of you. So yeah, it's good to pull tips. Like, we're a team. We're a team at the place I work at. But I find it highly ironic that the Chinese restaurant I work at found the most communist way to dole out tips. Like, oh. we're all equals here. We also don't talk about democracy. Uh, really? Nobody found that funny? Does nobody here follow politics at all? Oh my god. It's awful. Nope. People are the worst. I don't want to leave on this note, so I'm just going to tell more jokes right now because I feel like it because they have nothing going on here for late night. Um, so... I, uh, like I said before, I've done drag here, like, I can't even count the amount of times I just basically was like, ah, this is kind of what I look like, so yeah, I'm a boy, I guess, right now. <laughs> um, this isn't a drag show right now, just so you know. Um, Go Carlos! What? I have lipstick on, that's really the only difference. Um, so, uh, yeah, a lot of my friends are like, we should do stand up as Carlos Danger. And uh, Carlos Danger looks like a white dude, even though I'm Hispanic, he looks like a white dude. And uh, I don't want to write any jokes as Carlos because they all make my blood boil. Like, haha, -ha, guys, it's really funny I got that job over that black guy, right? 
High five, bro. <laughs> I make more money than my girlfriend. Applause break! <laughs> I can walk through Washington Park and nobody will bother me and search me. Unconstitutionally. You know, these jokes usually land, but I think everybody here has been drinking. Are we drinking? No. You two idiots right in the front of fucking drinking. <laughs> Give me a woo. Give woo! me something. Billy, Billy Roos is in here in a Superman outfit. Billy, have you been drinking? Never. Okay, there we go. This is a this is an alcohol-free environment, clearly. Uh, you know what? Uh, I botched the end of this mic. I uh, I tried to be funny. And uh, I was funnier earlier. So just uh, I'll leave you on this. Remember those jokes, all right? Uh, please, thank you so much for coming to the Open Minded Mic. Please give it up for the comics that came tonight. You guys are amazing. Um, I, uh, I like to take a picture because I'm really vain. And then each week I kind of measure how large my body looks. So uh, uh, if we could all uh, come up and take a picture. And uh, I want to stand next to the fattest one uh, so I look the best. <laughs>